Hi guys, I've just got into the office in London uh, and I thought I'd show you all how I start my day every morning uh, before the European session. Uh, how I would go about planning my possible entries uh, for the day ahead, looking at the charts um, from a blank canvas to then the moment that I would look to, to execute uh, a trade. I'm sure, as you can see on my, my right hand side, uh, with the YouTube channel, um, we do a morning briefing uh, every morning, um, Anthony and myself. And what I would do is each morning is, is speak to Ant, and I want to know what is driving the markets fundamentally. Has there been any change from overnight? Is there anything I need to be aware of? Uh, also, with the, the data calendar as well. So, for example, we've got retail sales data coming out at 9.30 this morning. So, therefore, if I'm trading the pound, I just need to be aware of that. Or, in some cases, it would be uh, a point of just waiting for that. Uh, moving over to the charts, and you know, this is you know, a discussion I'll have with Anthony every morning. And we'll talk about what were the headlines, was there anything that has changed on the macro environment or fundamentally was there any data out overnight? Was there any central bank speakers from the Asian session? Uh, how are markets looking? Um, and if I was just to, to bring in, and we'll start off with, say, Euro dollar, uh, you know, the most traded currency pair, how I would you know, very much start each day uh, is on a longer time frame. So here we're looking at the, the euro, and this is going back here to June to where we are now. So quite a, a clear trend to the downside. So that's something I would be making a note of. Obviously, trading this market every day, you know, you don't necessarily have to put it on the, the longer time frame to know that, but it just helps you uh, establish uh, where the market has been going uh, and where it is likely to, to go through, unless there's been a change of anything. Uh, as mentioned fundamentally. So for me, what I like doing here is just marking up the key highs and the lows near where we are trading. So you can see we're currently trading at 111.75 and a half on the futures. And I'm just putting in these uh, important highs and lows almost to contain the range as if there was to be a breaking story right now, I'm already aware of what is happening. And also if I wanted to, to be uh, super uh, vigilant about where price could go, I could make this time frame even longer and put it onto say a weekly chart and then suddenly if that low of the year was to break, well I'm already aware that we've got the high of the week of the 2017 May that price could go to and find support uh, from there. Back to the daily chart, so this is as mentioned something I would do for each product just as a, a way of starting fresh uh, and identifying where price, you know, if it was to uh, go to we could have a an area of support or resistance a similar reaction to the ones we've had previously so I'm, I'm lining up here just the uh, those highs the highest points or the lowest points where price was before we saw a reversal or a breakthrough uh, and so on and, and at this moment here is where I would drop it down to you know a four hourly chart and I would as mentioned do this for every market that I trade and by this point there's no moving averages on or the RSI or Fibonacci as of yet I want to keep it relatively uh, simple at this moment and you know here is is then where I would just put it on to say a 240 as mentioned four hourly chart just to see is there anything that I'm missing where are these really key levels uh, that I need to be aware of so again I'm just going to mark up this one because for whatever reason you don't necessarily need to know on the 2nd of August the buyers took over and we haven't come back since so if we were at any point today to drift down to 111.07 uh, could half expect a similar uh, reaction in the market so just looking at this market here you can see well we've had uh, a previous range that we've just broken through so as we know support when broken can turn to resistance so that's a really key point that I need to be aware of also to the downside we almost made it yesterday but we had a really key level uh, of support before that I need to be aware of now that we've broken through we broke through 10 days ago so if we were to come back to test that and we almost did yesterday another level that I need to be aware of so I've gone through the daily I've gone through the two for uh, the 240 I spoke to to Ant to see if there's anything fundamentally that I need to be aware of, uh, any data points that are coming out. And out of the Eurozone this morning was quickly 
switch back to the calendar, you can see there's nothing. So I'm happy to take a trade on any time from now until the afternoon when we have some US numbers, unless there's any central bank speaker that I need to be aware of or any uh, further developments maybe on the trade side if Donald Trump is up and tweeting. Uh, at this moment here in the 60 minute, this is when I would look to add other technical tools. So here I could add the, the pivot points uh, that majority of intraday traders will use and you can see here just how well the pivot was respected yesterday. Uh, and we had a good reaction to the S2 as well. So just looking back previously, I know the market is paying attention to these points and um, I have you know, confidence that they could also act as support or resistance entry points or targets to the day uh, as well. I'd also get uh, a bit more intricate with, with say trend lines. So for example, from the, the top here, I wanna see is there anything that I need to be aware of? And you can see I've got a really nice trend going here from the sixth to the 7th, to the 13th, and I'm not trying to overcomplicate things. I want to be looking at the levels that the majority of the market will as well, and pay attention to those points. I'm not looking to be in, say, five, six trades by the time it's already midday. I'm lining up where I see the best opportunities. What will the majority of the market be thinking should price get to whatever point? So if I just label this area here as, we'll call it A, for me, this point here is better than, say, the pivot. Reason being that we were contained by this, this range here uh, from the low of the 12. We just couldn't get through it. It's also the 112 handle. And if we uh, move to the left-hand side, we have a lot of uh, noise there previously where price just couldn't get through. And once we eventually did, we then found support. So the point being here is if, if we were to come back towards that area, you know, letter A, and we've also got the previous low yesterday morning. For me, this would now offer a good level of resistance to then continue the move from here to the downside. So that would be a strategy, for example, that I'd be looking to, to take on. And I'd also be starting to plan, well, where would my targets be? Where would the stop need to be? Not defined necessarily by how much risk I want to take, but how much I need to give the chart to let it breathe. So if I was to say make this my entry, it would be a stop loss uh, above, uh, say, this previous low here, so giving it enough room, targeting back down towards previous levels of what would then be support, and I can already have a predefined risk reward from what the chart is telling me. Now, does that then make sense with my risk parameters that I trade with? Uh, in this case, it does, and I'd be happy to take this trade on. So if we were to come back to 111.90, there's no new headlines. Uh, the correlation, so anything to do with the euro or the dollar remain as they are. At the moment, for me, it's a great trade that I'd like to take on. And would it, we'd also be happy for that not to work because I planned, I've gone through this process from the longer term chart. I've seen, is there any trend lines that I need to be aware of? Uh, the pivot points have acted quite well, so you know it's technically trading nicely. We've broken this range. I'm happy to take this trade on. Alternatively, to the downside, it might well be that this market, having broken this range and we've seen a bit of dollar strength come back into things, it might be that we don't drift higher and we actually come down to, to test this lower area again. So I want to be thinking about this. So where we've got this rectangle here, I'll just remove it. If we were to break this area, now I've got to be starting to think about, well, where's the trade opportunity from that point of view? And it might be that just dropping this down to 15 minute, what you can see is we are starting just to trend higher. So from last night, we've got this, this trend line in play here that we just can't break through. So the opportunity I'd now start thinking about is if this trend line was to break, and I want to be marking up those key levels of support because they would be my targets. So a trend line break, targeting the low of the morning, yesterday's low, and you can see by doing the longer term analysis, even though you can't see why I would have a line at 111.48 and a half, I already know that from that longer term chart that it's the low that we had back on the 5th of August at three o'clock where the buyers really took over, and I can have my target set up there. So I'm planning ahead of time where my stop losses, my targets, my entries would be, and in the right conditions for, for that to trade. Now there will always be you know, times where 
maybe I'm not too sure about um, a market. So I developed something like with a line in the sand. Uh, and for the S&P, so I've gone through the whole you know, 60 minute, 240 daily. And with the S&P over the last couple of days, you've seen big move to the upside and to the downside that maybe I'm not too sure about what will happen. So here we've got the low that we had back on the 13th was also the retest high from yesterday and also the pivot. This would be a point where maybe I want to see what happens here and it gives me my guide to either looking to say go long above where the buyers will come in or if that was to hold well the sellers can take over so I can wait to see what happens on the 15 minute candle the 5 minute candle uh, before making my decision and then being aware of where the next levels could be should price uh, react to that point or break through or hold uh, as well I hope you found this useful um, we'll be doing more of these for sure uh, and as you can see click like share and subscribe to our YouTube channel and any questions you have on this feel free to to let me know and I can take the time to get back to you.